Putin is Putin. I thought we all agreed on who Putin was, uh, and we understood that he wants to do these things, and he will not be... He will not be pushed back unless he actually believes a country is strong. And he is obviously aware, after watching Afghanistan, their Taliban Joe uh, merch mugs here, uh, that he knows we're in, a, we're in a weak spot with a weak leadership and we are projecting no strength. Yeah. Um, no, they don't know who Putin is, which is very obvious because I've been following this very closely over the past 48 plus hours. Um, nobody seems to know who Putin is. On one side, you have the ones that, like, if you saw if you saw his speech, it was insane. I think for a reason. Mm -hmm. But he was, you know, doing a callback to the Russian, you know, uh, empire. Um, he was actually criticizing Lenin. Yeah, I half expected them to for him to order Lenin's tomb to be taken out of Red Square, mm. um, which actually is there in his body. It's pretty insane. Um, but yeah, it, it was wild. Like, it, but there's a there's a method to that madness. He's he's not an ideologue. Right? He's not a communist, which I saw some people saying, well, we've got to stop communism. No, that doesn't exist over there anymore. Um, he's not a communist ideologue. He's not a uh, Russian identity ideologue. He's mm -hmm. none of those. He is exactly what he was in the Cold War. You know, he's a realist. He, geopolitics guides what he does, not ideology. Mm -hmm. That's what all this is about. And it's funny, uh, you know, well, and let me just explain there that the geopolitics of this is that Moscow is way too close to the Ukrainian border. That's the hard truth, right? So the closer Ukraine gets to the West, that means the closer the West gets to Moscow, their capital. So going back hundreds of years, that's what they've always tried to do is push that border further and further back. That's what guides this. And that's what he's trying to do. It has nothing to do with ideology and that's it. Does he, do you, are you a believer that he really means this thing he said uh, years ago where he said, you know, the, the, the collapse of the Soviet Union was the greatest uh, geopolitical catastrophe in the last hundred years? Is he trying to re, you know, bring the band back together? I don't think so. Um, mm -hmm. Even though he made that case during that speech that yeah. uh, kind of seems like he has the right to do that. That's, that's the way he was making it. But I, I think a lot of people have kind of misconstrued that quote. Okay. I think that um, Putin, what he really meant by that was that Look, th there was perfect balance between superpowers. Um, right now, and you hear this from him all the time, uh, is that there's one country dominating the others. There's one country that thinks that it can tell everybody else what to do. I mean, he's not wrong on that. We still operate as if it was, you know, 1992, you know, right, for the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. when we felt like we were going to stretch our legs, do whatever the heck we wanted to, because nobody could tell us otherwise. Well, times have changed now. Um, we shouldn't be doing that. We shouldn't... I mean, this, it's, it's, it's very, very ironic that, you know, everything Putin says, you know, there, there's, I think there's little meanings and little things beh behind it. Sure. Like the speech he gave, uh, he, he sounded crazy. Yeah. I, he, sa he sounded like a guy that was about to invade. He sounded like a guy that was going to go for Kiev. Right. And Putin is Kiev. not crazy. He's not, he's mm. not homicidal. Um, well, he's homicidal. He's homicidal. He's not suicidal. Yeah. yeah. Right. He's, he's not definitely homicidal. He's, he's homicidal. He's <laughs> yes. not suicidal. Okay. Um, he's not suicidal. So he, he's, he's, he's not going to do something that's going to endanger his regime. Hmm. He's going to do things to where he's going to threaten. He's going to build up. He's going to do things that try to strengthen his regime. Well, I was thinking of, the, of just the, the order of events here. Joe Biden comes out and says, hey, if it's a minor incursion, we're probably not going to do much of anything. Huge right? mistake. Where everyone's going to be arguing with each other if it's minor. I mean, huge mistake. So he hears this. He's seen what happened in Afghanistan. He knows we're weak. So he projects an overwhelming amount of force, the amount of force that would lead you to believe he's going for the whole country. Then he, let's just say, this is just hypothetical, but he, let's just say he leaks uh, to, to areas that he knows we're monitoring, we're ready to go for the whole thing, let's go, within a week, he does it multiple times, makes Joe Biden come out and kind of look like an ass where he's, he's saying they're going to come in any moment now, look out, look out, look out. And then, when everyone believes this big invasion is coming, he steps in and says, okay, well, we're recognizing the independence, we're going to roll some tanks over the border, we're going we're gonna to carve out a couple of these regions that we've wanted the whole time. And, and basically then, already had. Yeah, that he basically already had, but he's going to lock them down, maybe expand them a little bit, and then say, look, uh, we didn't invade at all, they w became independent, and uh, we, th because we, they don't go for the big invasion, the rest of the world sighs the relief and does nothing. Right. Is that, I mean, is that what we're, right? If he stopped right now, it would be a huge win for Putin. Sure. Um, and that's why that was such a ca uh, catastrophic mistake from, from Biden. So, but what he said was not untrue. 
You're mm-hmm. just not supposed to say that right. out loud and project to the world. <laughs> yes. And what and what was that projection? That projection was we're willing to cede that territory to Russia That's because incredible. because we're willing to appease him on that. Which which basically this is this is what I if if I'm in the Oval Office hearing some of these things, I'm just guessing what they're saying is is what they're saying is that okay yeah he's going to do this. It's going to be a quagmire for him because the entire they're going to be a pariah. The entire world's going to unite against him. It's going to be very hard for them to do anything. There are some significant economic levers that they can pull, like uh, dis- er, d- cutting them off from the SWIFT payment system. Mm-hmm. Um, it's that, a big one. That's a big one. But they're not doing that yet. N- not yet. Mm-hmm. Um, what they did do, um, so Biden did a press conference today. Um, they started sanctions. Um, mostly there's one, I think, bank that support, or that funds the military. Bank, right? Yeah, like yeah, VEP yeah. Bank mm-hmm. or yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. And a few other oligarchs. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of funny. It's a... Uh, there's you know this one uh, guy he's like an FSB head head of the FSB and his son which is the CEO of the largest bank in Russia and another government official and his son which is the CEO of the largest <laughs> uranium producer you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. it's like and it, it was cracking me up people would be like yeah you know it's like you know that's Russia you know yeah it's, that's, these sons are really yeah. talented people yeah. but apparently. I was like I actually responded and I was like yeah but we kind of have that problem here too mm. uh, <laughs> that's a great point I mean being the president's <laughs> son instantly makes you a leader you know and head of uh, you know anything any kind of opinions on Russian gas or uh, Ukrainian gas or Chinese business. It's, uh, it's kind of amazing. It's, it's a good point. It happens. A, it's a point. <laughs> what did you think overall of the, uh, are they playing this right with the sanctions? I don't think that the, so they're, they're, they're starting off very, very incremental mm-hmm. at the moment. I think they need to do a little bit more. Actually, right after they announced the sanctions, Russian stock futures skyrocketed. Really? So I think the invest- yeah, the investors were expecting a lot more. Yeah. So that was I just kind of like laughed at that. I was like, oh, you kind of missed the mark on that. I mean, the problem here is this is a difficult. Look, I'm not going to say this is like, oh, this is cake. This is an easy situation to deal with. It's not. But like, I have absolutely no faith in Joe Biden to understand it, no. to act appropriately, or anybody mm. else in this administration. I mean, it's a bunch of fools trying to handle a difficult situation that they have no, uh, no, no, uh, no handle on. For sure. Um, and, and their big thing was the grown-ups were at the table. Yeah. Um, now we have the diplomats, the career diplomats. They're back in control. They're the ones that are going to see us through this. So they were touting diplomacy first. Well, the problem is they're not doing anything diplomatic to stop these things from happening. Um, under the Trump administration, we, we saw a huge kind of like backlash against NATO. Mm. Um, he was taking active steps to, you know, either say, look, we don't I, I, I was fully expecting him to say, forget it. You know, we're going to significantly draw down our our um, our, pers- our petition participation in NATO or go the other way and say, well, we're going to stay in it if you guys put in as much as we are. Mm. I think little moves like that put Putin kind of off, off course. But I also think that he thought that Trump kind of had the same vision of NATO that, that, that Russia did. And that is that, what's the point? I mean, they have not had a clear focus, NATO hasn't, since 1991. They haven't had a focus. They're, they're, right now, NATO, well, now it's different, but then that's, that's the irony of this, is mm-hmm. everyone, no, no one knows better than Putin how irrelevant NATO was mm. up until a few weeks ago, right? Like, but I mean, what it, he's doing—the irony there is what he's doing—is he's bringing NATO back from the dead. Yeah, that's true. I mean, because there is that possibility, right? Where um, you know, they, let's say they do decide to go through Ukraine, we're not going to do much of anything, but we are stationed right past there—Lithuania, Estonia, you know, mm-hmm. we're, we're Poland. We're going to make sure that I mean, that's 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 our treaty, right? And I don't think, at this point, at least, that we're going to be breaking it, um, which you know, that puts us on the verge of world war. I mean, you know, if let's just say there is it's not a zero percent chance here that Putin decides to go through this country of Ukraine and wipe the whole thing out and he gets uh, hubris or a mistake is made or God only knows what. And a war starts between one of these countries uh, and Russia. And then we're at a position where, like, we are either sucked into a war with Russia or we're bailing on NATO. And I don't know, you know, both of those are. Are, are scary possibilities. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not likely, but it's not zero percent. We're 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 getting a, the, the clock is ticking closer to twelve here. Yeah, all, all it takes is one surface to air missile, you know, air defense system that misinterprets a Ukrainian plane, which they don't have a lot of, of those, mm-hmm. um, and it's actually one of our you know surveillance planes that are flying over Lithuania right. or something, or Romania or Poland. Yeah, that is a very real possibility. 
then it's like, oh, holy crap, what just happened? Yeah. Or some, uh, uh, you know, artillery shell or multiple rocket launcher goes off and, you know, strikes inside Poland or whatever. Now you just attack the NATO nation. Um, that's when things start getting very hairy. I just don't see Putin moving. So right now, they've declared that entire region uh, autonomous. Mm -hmm. um, now, in the areas that he's declared autonomous, there are some areas that are still under Ukrainian government control. Right. And a lot of the attacks have kicked up. I mean, they really haven't stopped since 2014, but it's increased in intensity on some of those areas. So now you're looking at how is Ukraine going to react? And you know Putin's just waiting for an excuse to push even further. So that little tug of war, that, that, that's really going to determine how bad this gets over the next, you know, the, the days and weeks and months going forward. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, but I, 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 I really do think that Putin's kind of, I'm crazy, I'm an attacker, or it was just an act, mm -hmm. you know, to show that, you know, he's telling his people uh, that, look, this is why I'm, I can legitimately do this. And he's also projecting to the world that, yeah, I'm crazy enough to do this. Mm. It just doesn't seem right to me because the guy is not like that. Like I said, he, he, he is very strategic. He's very calculating. So we're hoping, basically, we're hoping he stops. Th that's, the, that's, which yeah. is, I mean, it's a terrifying thing that we're depending on. We're just yeah. basically hoping he stops. Worst um, case scenario is yeah. they do do like a three-pronged attack coming in from Belarus, Crimea, mm -hmm. you, and the main part of Russia, and they go straight to Kiev. That, that, that is the worst possible scenario. And that would be the Russian form of shock and awe. Like, yeah. that, that's what it would be. Nonstop uh, artillery, sh or, um, bombs, cruise missiles. It would be catastrophic. But it would also be catastrophic for Russia. Well, not catastrophic, but it would be very bloody for Russia as yeah. well. Yeah, and they, I mean, they, stay, they have a couple well, a couple hundred thousand troops in, in Ukraine. They're not going to just give up. I mean, they, yeah, that yeah. would be a bad, that would be a rough, rough you, outing. The Ukrainian troops, what they would do is they would, they would the, the only way they can fight them off would be do a, 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 um, a strategy of retreating little by little by little, a slow retreat mm -hmm. back to the cities. Then once they've whittled down the Russian soldiers, then they get in the cities, and that's when you get urban warfare, and it could stretch on for months that for way. Months that way, yeah. Very bloody. Uh, last one for you. Um, there's a point that it's being made on the right that I tend to like and want to believe. But basically, the idea is they came in in 2014, took Crimea. Trump gets in office. He's there for four years. They don't do anything. Then, as soon as he's out of office, Biden's in office. Now they're going for even more. Yeah. Is that a legitimate point or is that just a partisan thing that I just happen to like? No, that, that's absolutely a legit, mm -hmm. legitimate point. Um, the Russians did screw around with the elections in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it actually effect, affected anything, really. Yeah. But they did screw around with the elections. And I think that was a direct shot at Hillary Clinton because Putin had said publicly that he blamed Hillary Clinton when she was secretary of state for manipulating elections in Russia when he was running. Mm. So it was a direct attack on that. Uh, then you get, um, you know, uh, Kerry and, uh, and Biden and Obama um, actively helping with the 2014 revolution in, in Ukraine, the Maidan in Kyiv. Um, again, I mean, I, if, 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 um, if um, Trump would have lost that election and if Hillary Clinton would have become president, I think this would have happened then. Mm. Um, so I think they're responding directly. He's, 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 he's responding to the people that have wronged him in the past. Now, like I said, Trump had a different play on this. Um, I, I, he had the same, that same sort of like, I don't know what he's going to do. Well, the kind of the wild guy. And that's, that, I think that intimidated Putin at some level. Oh, man. I mean, yeah. And there, there was a doctrine. There was a Trump doctrine that we finally started figuring out. Mm -hmm. uh, if something happened, if Trump got pissed off or there's some security concern, he would send four or five carrier battle groups, which is very significant, like he did off uh, the coast of Korea. He'd just send them that direction. The threat of war would be very high. Uh, pretty soon they would capitulate. If they didn't, then Trump would hit them with a lot of sanctions. Or in the case of Syria, he actually used military action. But his, the way that he thought and the way his people around him did things was not like the establishment foreign policy elites, mm -hmm. like what you had under Obama and now under Biden. It's all the same people. And they know exactly what they're going to do. And they know exactly how they think. They still think of an expanding NATO, which is the wrong way to think. I'm not saying I mean, we should not apologize for Putin. He's a thug. He's a, you know, a, he's just not, he's not a bad, he's a bad guy. Um, so what he does, we should condemn and the world should make them pariahs and hurt them e economically. Um, but the old way of doing things is not the right way of doing things anymore. I, I do not see why we even have a NATO anymore. I mean, if, Putin would not have this excuse if not for the way they've handled NATO in the past. He wouldn't even have the excuse. Mm. But now he's using it as justification. Well, thank God we at least have Kamala Harris to take care of this. Oh, uh, she, yeah. She, she'll she get to the root problems yeah. of probably the racism involved in between Ukraine and Russia. We'll get into that later. Jason Butchel, head writer and researcher for Glenn Beck. Uh, make sure to follow him on the Twitters. 
Thanks for stopping in, Jason. Appreciate Thanks for having me. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here.